This is the first lecture for ECE 205 Circuits and Systems. Circuits and System is a course that serves as a bridge from AC and DC circuits to upper level courses in signals and systems and controls. Some of the topics covered in this class include first and second order circuits, characteristics of first and second order circuits, frequency domain analysis, and filter types. Some of the topics related to signals and systems are properties, transfer functions, impulse response, convolution, interconnected systems, Bode plots, and steady state response. And from control systems, properties, poles and zeros, stability, gain and phase margins, Bode plots, and feedback systems. Today's topic is first order circuits and the lecture has the following learning objectives. Define first order circuits, Use standard form of a first order circuit to determine the time constant and static gain of an electrical system and derive the governing differential equation for the first order circuit. A first order circuit is an electric circuit that can be described by a first order differential equation, thus the name first order circuit. First order circuits include resistors and either inductors or capacitors and they are typically referred to as RL or RC circuits. There are two characteristics of a first order circuit. The first one is the time constant. The time constant, tau, describes how long it takes for an energy storage element, being an inductor or a capacitor, to charge or discharge, or for the system to reach steady state. A system is within 2% of its final value in four time constants, and within 1% of its final value in five time constants. The static gain, k, represents the ratio between the output and input of the system after it reaches steady state for a step constant input. An example of an RC circuit would be a voltage source, a resistor, and a capacitor. The standard form for the governing differential equation is tau dy of t dt plus y of t equals k x of t, where x of t is the input, in this case that could be the voltage source, and y of t is the output. Y of t could either be the voltage across the capacitor or the current through the resistor in the capacitor. So since k is the steady state gain, uh, the output over the input, k would be equal to y of infinity over x of infinity, where y and x could be voltages or currents. Note that there are other standard forms for the differential equation, but this is the one that we will use in this class and refer to as the governing differential equation. A first order circuit exhibits a natural response which occurs when it is connected to a DC source and then suddenly disconnected and the stored energy is released to a resistive network. The natural response is due to stored energy in an inductor or capacitor. Typically, if you have a natural response, you will see a steady state value such as the voltage across the capacitor after a long time and then there will be an exponential decay related to that four time constants to get within 1% of the final value. A first order circuit also exhibits a step response which occurs when a DC source is suddenly connected to a circuit and it begins to store energy. This is called the step response or the force response and the shape is just different where you will see something that's exponentially increasing such as to a final voltage across a capacitor or current through an inductor. A first order circuit with the sudden application of a DC source can also be described in terms of the transient and steady state response. The transient response is the time when the inductor or capacitor is charging or discharging before the five time, five time constant expires. The steady state response is the value that it reaches after a long time. The transient response is the temporary response that will die out with time, while the steady state response is the permanent part that will occur after a long time. In order to derive the governing differential equation for a first order circuit, you will use circuit analysis techniques such as Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. You should also review the key properties of the three passive circuit elements, resistors, inductors, and capacitors shown in table one. So now let's review the three passive circuit elements that we will use the most in this course. The first one is a resistor. A resistor resists the flow of current and the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance is Ohm's law and it's I times R or I equals V over R and under DC conditions there is no change for a resistor. 
An inductor produces a voltage based upon opposition to change in electric current. It's made of coils and it stores energy in the form of current. Current cannot change abruptly through an inductor, but the voltage can based upon whether the inductor is storing or releasing energy. The voltage for an inductor is defined as L, DI, DT, or if you solve for current, it's one over L, the integral from T naught to T, V, D tau, plus the initial energy stored in the inductor, if any. Under DC conditions, an inductor looks like a short circuit. The reason this is true is because voltage is equal to L di dt, and if you have a constant current, the derivative of the constant is zero, and a short circuit represents zero volts. A capacitor is made of two plates with a dielectric in between, and it produces a current based upon a time-varying electric field. It stores energy in the form of voltage. Voltage cannot change abruptly across a capacitor, but current can abruptly change based upon whether the capacitor is storing or releasing energy. For a capacitor, the current is I is equal to C dV dt. To find the voltage through a capacitor, it's 1 over C, the integral from T naught to T, I d tau plus the initial voltage stored in the capacitor of any. Under DC conditions, a capacitor looks like an open circuit and there's no current flowing. The reason this is true is because under constant voltage conditions, you would have the derivative of a constant number, which is zero, which would make the current zero amps, which represents an open circuit. Okay, let's try an example. Derive the governing differential equation for the following circuit. Express the answer in standard form and determine the static gain and time constant. Recall that the governing differential equation was tau dy dt plus y of t equals k x of t, where x of t was the input and y of t was the output. For the circuit we have here, our voltage source will be the input, and the voltage across the capacitor will be the output. So I can rewrite this differential equation as tau d v c of t dt plus v c of t equals k v s of t. So now I have an RC circuit with a voltage source as an input, one resistor, and one capacitor. The way that we're going to derive this differential equation is we're going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law. Recall that this law states that the sum of the voltages around a loop is equal to zero. So therefore, I'm going to define a loop current as I of t. So when I write the KVL equation, I'm going to have rises as negative, negative Vs of t, plus the voltage drop across the resistor, Vr of t, plus the voltage across, drop across the capacitor, Vc of t, and that equals zero. So recall that Ohm's law is V equals I times R, so I can rewrite this as negative Vs of t, plus I of t times R, plus Vc of t equals zero. Now remember, I of t is also the current through the capacitor, so I know the definition of the current through the capacitor is I of t is equal to C, dvc of t dt. So I can replace I of t with C dvc of dt in my second equation here. So when I put equation three into equation two, I have negative vs of t plus rc dvc of t dt plus vc of t equals zero. So now I'm going to rearrange this so that I can compare it to my governing differential equation and I will have RC dVC of t dt plus VC of t equals VS of t. So when I compare this equation to the original governing differential equation, I see that the time constant tau is equal to R times C and there is no gain here, or the gain's one, 
So k is equal to 1. All right, let's try another example. Derive the governing differential equation for the following circuit. Express the answer in standard form and determine the static gain and time constant. Once again, the input is Vs of t, the output is Vc of t. So we will have the same governing differential equation as we did before. So I will write that again. It's tau d Vc of t dt plus Vc of t equals k Vs of t. We're going to use Kirchhoff's current law to solve this problem. Kirchhoff's current law states that the current into and out of a node must sum to zero. So I'm going to define the ground here. This top node is Vc of t, and I'm going to define a current into that node as Is of t. So the current coming in from the source is going to be Vs of t minus Vc of t, the voltage on each side of that resistor, divided by the resistance, which is Ra. The current out of that node is through the capacitor C dVc of t dt, and the current through the resistor is Vc of t divided by Rb. So now we're going to use a little bit of algebra to rearrange this equation, and we're going to have C dVc of t dt plus the quantity 1 over Ra plus 1 over Rb Vc of t, and that equals Vs of t over Ra. So finally, I can rewrite this as Ra times Rb over Ra plus Rb times C times dVc of t dt plus Vc of t, which equals Rb over Ra plus Rb times Vs of t. So now this is the final governing differential equation. So let's see if we can identify tau and k. The quantity that multiplies dVc of t dt is tau. So for this problem, tau is equal to Ra times Rb over Ra plus Rb times C. And what you will see is that this is actually the equivalent resistance seen by the capacitor if you turn off the voltage source. It's the parallel combination of Ra and Rb. And K is equal to the quantity that multiplies Vs. And in this case, this is Rb over Ra plus Rb. And we will see that this is the gain under steady state conditions when the capacitor looks like an open. All right, let's try an example that has an inductor. Derive the governing differential equation for the following circuit, express the answer in standard form, and determine the static gain and the time constant. So this time our input is a current source, Is of t, and the output is Il of t, the current through the inductor in series with the resistor Rb. So the standard differential equation would be tau Dil of t dt plus Il of t equals k i s of t. And we're going to use Kirchhoff's current law to solve this problem as well. So I'm going to define the reference node of the ground at the bottom and name the node at the top v of t. So the KCL equation is that i s of t is equal to the current through Ra plus Il of t. So using Ohm's law, Is of t is equal to the voltage across Ra divided by the current, so V of t divided by Ra plus Il of t. Now note that we can also write that V of t, the voltage across the inductor in series with the resistor Rb, is equal to L Dil of t dt plus Il of t, the current through the resistor Rb, times Rb. So now we can take the third equation and put it into the second one.
And the fourth equation becomes IS of T is equal to L over RA DIL of T DT plus RB over RA IL of T plus IL of T. So now we need to write this in standard form so that we can compare it to the original equation. And by rearranging it with algebra, I get L over RA plus RB times D I L of T DT plus I L of T is equal to RA over RA plus RB I S of T. So now let's compare this to the original standard governing differential equation. And we see here that tau is equal to L over RA plus RB and K is equal to RA over RA plus RB. Okay, let's do one last example using an operational amplifier. Derive the governing differential equation for the following circuit. Express the answer in standard form and determine the static gain and time constant. We will assume that we have an ideal operational amplifier here. Remember, there are two assumptions we make about ideal op operational amplifiers. One of them is that the voltage at the negative terminal is equal to the voltage at the positive terminal. The other one is that the current into the negative and positive terminals is equal to zero amps. So what we're going to do is use KCL in order to derive the governing differential equation where we have that the current through RA is equal to the current through RB plus the current through the capacitor. So the current through RA would be the voltage on the left side of RA, Vs of T, minus, and because this is tied to ground, this is zero volts, minus zero over RA, and that equals the current through RB, which is zero minus VO, zero minus VO of T divided by RB, plus the current through the capacitor is going to be negative C, D, V, O of T, D, T. Note that it's negative C because the voltage on the left side of the capacitor is zero. The voltage on the right side is V naught, so that would be negative the derivative of V naught of T, D, T. So by rearranging this, we will have R, B, C, D, V naught of T, D, T, plus V naught of T, is equal to negative RB over RA VS of T. Now note the input was VS of T and the output was VO of T. So comparing this to our standard governing equation, we have tau V naught of T DT plus V naught of T equals K VS of T. So once again, we're going to identify the time constant and the static gain or steady state gain. So tau is equal to RBC, and what that represents, the time constant, is the resistance seen by the capacitor times capacitance. And K, the static gain, because this is an inverting amplifier under DC conditions when the capacitor is an open circuit, the gain is negative RB over RA.